Hello and welcome to this video on the frequency response of filter circuits. In this video we're going to use Microsoft Excel to produce a theoretical set of values that we would expect from a filter circuit. So first of all, what is a filter or a filter circuit? Well a filter is a circuit that allows certain frequencies to pass but reduces or attenuates other frequencies. So in the diagram I've got here on the right hand side, you can see an example of a low pass filter. And we call it a low pass RC filter because it's a very simple circuit that consists of only two components. We have a resistor and a capacitor. And before we generate a set of values for this particular circuit, I want to have a think about a previous topic that we've covered, which was the potential divider. In a potential divider circuit, we use two resistances to split a voltage. And we can think of this circuit being an analogy of something like a potential divider because we have two components here and we have an input uh, voltage here of 5 volts AC. And like a potential divider, that 5 volts is going to be split uh, across these two components. Some of the 5 volts will be dropped across the resistance some of the 5 volts will be dropped across the reactance of our capacitor here. The only difference between this circuit and potential divider circuits that we've looked at which involve just resistors is that the reactance of this capacitor changes depending on the frequency. And so what we're going to do is generate a range of results over a range of frequencies here and we're going to plot the results that we find. So what we're going to hopefully end up with is a set of values for the output voltage. And you can see here that the output is just measured across the capacitor. So we're essentially treating this, uh, this circuit as a potential divider, working out the output voltage by determining how much of the 5 volts is dropped across our capacitor over different frequencies. So on the left-hand side here, you can see that I've already set out a range of frequencies from 10 to a million or one megahertz. So we're starting at 10 hertz and going up in not um, uh, very consistent increments. I've just chosen these to get a range of different frequencies all the way from very low frequencies, 10 hertz, all the way up to one megahertz. And to begin with, I want to start by calculating the reactance of our capacitor here at these different frequencies. So to do that, we're going to use the formula for the reactance of the capacitor, which was minus 1, uh, sorry, 1 over uh, 2 pi Fc. Sometimes we give it a minus um, in some formulations, but here we're just going to use 1 over 2 pi Fc. And we're going to do that just as an Excel command, an Excel formula. So any formula in Excel needs to start with an equals, and our formula is my, uh, sorry, 1 over 2 pi uh, so 2 times, and pi we can put in as a function in Excel, pi followed by just a, an open and close bracket there. So 2 times pi times the frequency, well the frequency is the cell on the left here, times by C, our capacitance, 22 nanofarads in this particular instance. So that's 22 times 10 to the power of minus 9. If you haven't previously seen our videos on calculating things like reactance and impedance, I would suggest going back to look at those first, but I'm assuming that you've already checked those videos out and you're happy with where that formula has come from. But here now we have a range of reactances uh, for our capacitor. And so at very low frequencies, our reactance is very high, uh, 723,431 ohms. And by the time we reach these higher frequencies, that reactance has dropped to just 7.23 ohms. The next thing I want to calculate is the impedance of my whole circuit. And the impedance is the, the complex magnitude uh, of the resistance and the, capacitor, uh, the reactance of the capacitor. And so to do that, uh, we're going to use Pythagor Pythagoras' theorem, uh, the resistance squared 
plus the reactant squared and then square root the result. So if we again do that as a, a formula in Excel here, we can say that it's the square root, and I'll open brackets, of the resistance squared. Well, the resistance remains constant, so that's 1,800 uh, ohms, and that's squared, plus the reactance squared. Well, the reactance is what we've determined to the left here, and that's also to the power 2 squared in Excel, like so. And so now we can also determine the, fr uh, the impedance of all of the possible frequencies um, in our circuit result in the following impedances. Uh, if you don't know already, if you've done the formula once, you can just drag that bottom right corner down to complete all of the, uh, the column there. And so now I have a range of impedances in my circuit. Next, I want to calculate the output voltage. And so to do that, I'm going to do something very similar to the potential divider rule that we've looked at in a previous video. We're going to say that the output voltage is the proportion of uh, the reactance that we've got for the capacitor uh, compared to the, res the, the impedance of the whole circuit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that our output voltage is whatever our input voltage was multiplied by that ratio. Let's see what that looks like as a formula. So V out is equal to 5, our input voltage, multiplied by, here's our ratio, oops, try that again, our ratio being, uh, I've done something wrong there, I'll try and get out of that. 5 times our ratio, which is our reactance, V2, divided by the impedance of the whole circuit, which we've already calculated as well. So at a very l low frequency, we can see that pretty much all of the input voltage makes it to the output voltage. We have 4.99998 uh, volts as our uh, output voltage at that very low frequency of 10 hertz. So our filter circuit really isn't uh, filtering the low frequencies at all. And as we drag that down, what we'll hopefully see is by the time we get to very high frequencies, the response has been attenuated and we're getting very little uh, at the output terminals, 0.02 volts. And so uh, you'll notice that this circuit was called a low pass filter, and this is the reason why. This circuit allows low frequencies to pass without very much attenuation at all, but high frequencies are attenuated, so we see very little response um, on the output when we get to very high frequencies. The last thing that I want to do is determine the decibel response. And the decibels is a logarithmic unit that uses um, the decibel formula uh, using log to the base 10. And so again, I can do that as a formula um, in Excel. And the decibel formula is 20 multiplied by uh, log to the base 10. There's already a function for it in Excel, log to the base 10 of the output over the input. And so the output we have here divided by the input, which is always 5. And here we get a decibel response for our, um, for our circuit. You'll notice that this first value is at a, at a times 10 to the minus 5. It's a very, very small value. Um, and likewise, our values are very small in terms of their uh, decibels initially. But then um, by the time we get to the bottom, we have very large attenuation in decibels. So decibels is another unit that we use to demonstrate the response of filter circuits. And what I want to do finally in this video is plot a graph of frequency 
um, against the decibel response. And so what I want to do is highlight column A just by clicking on the, the A at the top of the column there and holding down uh, control or command on a Mac, uh, highlight column E as well. So now that I have both of these columns highlighted, I can go to uh, insert and I can insert a graph. I'm gonna choose a scatter graph in this particular instance and I'm gonna choose one with points and a curved line as well. And so when we insert that graph, what we see is something uh, like this and it's not really uh, what we want to see in a, a filter graph or a decibel graph. The reason being, uh, we want a logarithmic scale on our graph uh, because our decibels are already a logarithmic uh, scale down the side here. We also require a logarithmic scale on the x-axis for frequency. And that's what we call a semi-logarithmic graph. The x-axis is going to be a logarithmic scale and here we've got our decibels plotted linearly down the side because a decibel is already a logarithmic unit in itself. And so on our horizontal x-axis here what I'm just going to do is double click on that axis and down the side here I have the option for a logarithmic scale. And so when I uh, choose that you'll see that my scale now increases rather than increasing linearly it increases logarithmically each uh, demarcation on the scale is a factor of 10 and so we go from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1000 to 10,000 and so on and so forth and now we have this semi logarithmic graph that shows nicely the response of our low pass filter what I'm also going to do is just put some uh, titles on my graph, uh, some axis titles, because along here we have our frequency. So I'll just label that on uh, measured in hertz, which should have a capital H. And up the side here we have our decibel response measured in decibels. So this circuit is a good example of a low pass filter and the reason being we can hopefully see clearly now, I'll just get rid of that key at the side there, which will hopefully give us a bit more room. The low frequencies have pretty much uh, zero decibels and what that means is that there's no gain or attenuation in the circuit. The signal hasn't been increased and it hasn't been decreased at the output compared to the input. But as we start to reach higher and higher frequencies, you can see uh, what we call a roll off in the response here. The, um, the decibels become negative, we're getting attenuation in the circuit and the output is now greatly reduced compared to the input. One of the things that we can do with these graphs is we can determine what's called the cutoff frequency. And we can do that by using the minus 3 decibel point. So what we can do is determine the cutoff frequency um, by using our scale here. One of the things you might want to do, again by double clicking on this scale, we can um, choose the axis options and have more delineations between uh, rather than going in tens, we could go in in ones or in threes, and we can pick out the minus three decibel point in order to determine the cutoff frequency of that circuit, which is by standard given as at the minus three decibel point. We're not going to do that in this video, though. The last thing that I want to demonstrate is that we can also create a high pass filter in a very similar manner. And the way we can do that is simply by reversing the components. So if I just get rid of um, this graph down there for a second and I want to look at this uh, circuit diagram again. To create a high pass filter we could easily just reverse the position of these components and measure across the resistor at the output and the capacitor in this position as well. 
So what I can do, let's just make another column here. We could make the output voltage response um, in this column for a high pass filter. And we're going to do that in a similar manner to the way we did previously, using the, the uh, ratio of um, resistance in this case to impedance in the circuit. So 5 is our input voltage multiplied by the ratio of the resistance, which was 1800, divided by the total impedance of the circuit. If you remember for our low pass filter, it was the reactance over the impedance. We've reversed the components now. We're measuring across the resistance in a sense. So the resistance is just a constant. And now we can find a um, voltage output response for our high pass filter. Already you can see that it's the opposite behavior pretty much of our low pass filter. Now it's the low frequencies that are attenuated. It's the high frequencies that are allowed to pass. So again, what I can do, I'll just move that diagram a little bit more. Let's look at the decibels um, for our high pass filter. And we'll do the same thing. Uh, 20 multiplied by log to the base 10 of, in this case, our high pass output voltage over our input voltage, which is just 5. So the log uh, formula is always the same. 20 times log to the base 10 output over input and now we get a response that looks something like this and so again what I'm going to do is plot another graph to demonstrate our high pass filter just by reversing the components and so again I'll highlight those two columns I'll insert a scatter graph and straight away I want to change that uh, those axis options uh, to have a logarithmic scale and we have now our high pass filter and we can see the opposite behavior we have at low frequencies a great deal of attenuation over minus 50 decibels so very little signal is reaching the output when we're at low frequencies but when we reach high frequencies we have very little attenuation zero decibels and so the output is going to be around five volts the same as the input so I hope this video has been a useful theoretical introduction to very simple filter circuits filter circuits can be used in a variety of different applications one good example for a low pass filter might be noise reduction a lot of signals encounter very high frequency noise from a range of sources and a low pass filter could be used to eliminate these high frequencies that we don't want whilst retaining lower frequencies that we we might want to retain so I hope this video has been uh, useful not just in a, a sort of theoretical introduction to filters but also how we can use Microsoft Excel to uh, derive some theoretical values and plot those on a logarithmic scale in Excel.